guiding the next generation of professionals to the path of artificial intelligence. Inspected audience, welcome to Dialogue, a professionally endorsed seminar to introduce you to the applications of artificial intelligence and their benefits. Now, uh, before we begin, we'll be introducing ourselves to you. Uh, we're all students of Bachelors of Artificial Intelligence at Fast National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences, Islamabad. Uh, and we're delivering these talks as a part of our social work project for the first semester. We come from different backgrounds, different cities such as Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi, Peshawar, Sargodha, and Sialkot. But we all had similar interests such as computing sciences or pre-engineering uh, back in our high school. So here we are studying artificial intelligence together at Islamabad. Assalamualaikum everyone. This is Mazali Nadeem and I'll be one of the speakers for the seminar today. Um, I did my A-levels from Pakistan MC College, Beijing, and now I'm at FAST pursuing AI. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working as the officer of workshops and boot camps at the National University Computing Society. At the same time, I'm serving as the vice head of registrations for the Google Developers Club at FAST. Also, I'm a student volunteer at Ujala Foundation, which is an NGO. Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, Noor Khan here, and I'm one of the speakers for today's seminar, so you'll be hearing a lot from me. Uh, well, uh, I've done my FEC from APSDHA Phase 1, and right now I'm doing uh, uh, a bachelor's degree in AI from FAST Islamabad. Uh, well, apart from that, uh, I'm Officer's Public Relations at NUCS, and I'm a student volunteer at Ojala, which is basically an NGO. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sharia Suhail and I'm the media head of our social project that is Dialogue. I'm currently studying at Fast News ISP campus and I've done my ONA levels from Beacon House Bahia Town, Lahore. Also, I'm the officer events at, at, at NUCS and along with that, I'm the student volunteer at, at Ujala NGO Foundation. Assalamu alaikum guys, it's Ahmad Raza here. I'm the part of the media team. I'm studying at Fast News Islamabad and also a student volunteer and fundraiser at Ujala Foundation. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Abdul Wadud Wasim. I am the data analyst for this project. Previously, I've studied FSC pre engineering from APSTHA Phase 1 Islamabad and now I am a student of artificial intelligence at Fast National University Islamabad. Apart from my studies, I am an officer graphics at NUCS Society and also a student volunteer at NGO Ujala. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Azan Rik Khan and I have completed my FSC pre-engineering from Punjab Group of Colleges, Sargodha Campus. I am currently a student of FAST and I am also a student volunteer at Ujala NGO. All right, guys, you have now had a good look at the team and who we are. Um, here we have our emails in front of you. You can reach out to either of us if you have any queries after the seminar. We'll be happy to help. All right, so here we are with the first and the most basic concept of what is artificial intelligence. So basically, AI is a CS related field that enables us to induce human-like intelligence in machines. And as a result, the machines are able to think, decide, react, and solve problems like humans do. In other words, you can say that the machines are made smart enough so that they can comprehend and behave accordingly. Now let's watch a short video on some practical applications of AI. So please, here we go.
Hi, Sophia. I believe I am Sophia. This is Sophia the robot taking her first steps. She's even got some sweet dance moves up her sleeve. Her skin, called Frubber, helps her look lifelike and have human expressions. She can blink, turn her head and smile, but she has over 60 different facial expressions. Tell me what it was like to take your first steps. I'm really excited. A little disoriented, but really excited. So there are several countries that are using artificial intelligence um, for the research and development. Uh, most notably, the United States of America and China are working every day on new tech, new uh, projects and applications that use AI. Um, other than that, there's the United Kingdom, um, there's Japan. When we talk about robotics, Japan is at the top and they're now infusing AI in robots to make them a lot more intelligent. Um, similarly, we have Russia. Singapore and Canada that are working on AI and they have a bunch of startups that are working on new AI applications every day. So where is AI being used? Let's have a look. Firstly, education. A lot of online learning platforms are using AI to predict what their students might want to study uh, based on their previous courses. Secondly, healthcare, automated diagnostics and surgeries. Now this is for especially used in places where the doctors are not readily available. Let's suppose we're talking about a rural area, uh, a village. So we don't have a lot of doctors there, a lot of specialists there. So instead we can have an AI software that does the diagnostics using the CR, uh, CT scan or the MRI reports. Law. A lot of judicial courts are using AI in their judgments just to ensure that their decisions do not contradict any law of the country. E-commerce. Many online platforms like Amazon, Taobao, Daraz, eBay, they're all using AI to predict what their customer might want to buy later once they've made a previous purchase. Transport. Companies like Waymo, Tesla, Uber, they're all working on cars that are a lot more efficient safe to drive and they're not tiring because when you're driving for long hours you get tired so they're working on unmanned cars just to ensure that you do not have to drive and it's safer for you and everyone out there now let's talk about what ai is capable of so first of all we have the term generalized learning basically this term refers to the ability of your model to adapt to the new data that was acquired from the same previous data used uh, in creating your model. Uh, now, as far as the terms uh, problem solving and reasoning are concerned, uh, the AI machine will give its argument based on the facts, no matter what the scenario is, and will solve the problems according to the given data. So here we have an example of how the machine learning approach is different from the traditional way of programming. Uh, so in the traditional way of programming, you have to input the data and it will give you the output. Uh, in contrast, in the machine learning programming, uh, it will give you the output of the data you have entered, but it will also recognize uh, the operation you have performed with that data. For example, if you input two numbers like 5 and 6 and you have multiplied them, uh, it will give you an output of 30. Uh, but by only seeing the output, it will also give you the answer of the operation performed above. So basically this approach is very handy while uh, dealing with complex problems. AI has a bunch of subfields or as we call them subsets. First of all, machine learning. This is a field of study where computers learn from historical data. So you have an input, you have an output. The computer will pro 
will make the program by itself. Deep learning. Now, this is actually a new field of study. Um, this talks about modeling the brain, the human brain itself by mathematical equations. And similarly, when you, when you code those equations, they, they model your brain in a computer program. Natural language processing. Now this talks about the text and the spoken language. So if I type something to a chatbot and it replies to me, that is natural language processing. AI has um, these five common subfields that I'm going to show to you. Uh, machine learning, we talked about it. Deep learning, the mathematical model of your brain. Computer vision, I talked about medical diagnostics. When uh, the computer looks at your uh, MRI report, it is actually viewing the report. So it sees the report pixel by pixel and that falls under the category of computer vision. Natural language processing similarly is um, a chatbot or um, another virtual assistant that we have nowadays from there there's one at google there's from um, baidu and so many other alexa yeah alexa and then we have robotics robots were previously just uh, remote controlled now they have ai infused to them and they have the ability to make decisions given the right circumstances let's talk about how humans are compared with computers so we humans may be the most smart uh, beings out there, but we do get bored and tired quite quickly. We need something new every time. So when, when it comes to understanding or analyzing repetitive amounts of data, um, humans often have an error rate of at least 5%. Uh, when it comes to the computer, all it needs is power. And until it has power, it is going to analyze the data, keep analyzing, studying it until it ha until the data ends or until you stop it yourself. Thirdly, um, in 2017, um, AI and some algorithms reached as high as 97.7% of accuracy rate, which basically means that the humans that who have 5% of error rate every time have been defeated by 2.3% of error by the computers now. And that is why we're using artificial intelligence in a bunch of applications all around the world to make better and more accurate analysis. Now let's have a quick walkthrough over how does AI think. So here we have some of the cities uh, with its original importance and the rental price of a house in those specific areas. So as you can see with the importance of the city uh, and with the space provided the prices go high. So now if you want to calculate the price for a house in some other city like Islamabad or Gujarawala uh, by using an AI system of course, we'll have to input the name of the city, uh, its original importance and some other details like uh, the address, the number of rooms and area. Uh, and the AI system will give us the desired result. Uh, as you can see, um, if we want to calculate the rental price of a house in Islamabad, so we can expect a relatively higher rental prices over there because Islamabad is a federal capital, we all know that. And uh, the Gujarawala is not a provincial capital, it's a small industrial city, so we can expect a relatively lower rental prices over there. Thank you, Noor, for such an amazing walkthrough. Now let's talk about where artificial intelligence is. Artificial intelligence is, guys, everywhere. It is used in every technology nowadays. Talk about how AI is making a world, making the world a better place. For example, Facebook is using AI to detect any type of inappropriate content posted by some user and remove it immediately at that time. For example, any uh, inappropriate picture or any inappropriate hatred content, suicidal content, they remove it immediately as the AI detects it. Similarly, Tencent and Alibaba are also using artificial intelligence at their transaction time. For example, uh, Alibaba is getting millions and millions of order at a single time. Uh, it is not possible for a person or any number of person to detect to monitor all that data at a single time. But it is possible for an AI system to monitor lots of lots of data at a single time. Not only these applications or websites use artificial intelligence, but also artificial intelligence play a great role in biology. 
as DeepMind's AlphaFold was able to solve 50 year old bio problem that was the protein folding problem. As you guys can see how AI is used to solve a bio problem. Now further Mars will explain. Thank you. So AI is now being used in several fields and one of them is healthcare. They use AI for digital consultation, which is actually a computer software or an application which allows the young generation or anyone to uh, go to uh, just open that software and find a consultant for themselves. So they don't have to spare time to go to the consultant himself. And this software is usually free. Robotics in surgery. Now, it doesn't mean that the robot itself is going to conduct the surgery, but rather it aids the surgeon into have doing more precise operations while doing the surgery. And hassle-free data maintenance. Technicians are using AI in data documentation, sorting and storing. Now, there is, this is important because when you're in a hospital, you have loads of data. You have a lot of patient information that you have to use to assess the patient's condition. So they use AI to make sure that the data is well maintained. There is no ambiguity in the data. And at the same time, that data can be used to um, make a decision for a patient, whether he's getting better or not. And if the doctor has to do something in order to improve his condition. So that's why uh, we need AI for healthcare. Well, AI has played a vital role in the real estate industry. Uh, in fact, it has made the job a lot easier. So basically, there are a lot of applications that offers with personalized recommendation based on the interest of the user uh, and also inform the realtors about the recent searches of the user. So this way, uh, it helps both the user and the realtors in their own domains. Uh, and one can find a place of his or her own choice without any on-ground effort. Now, AI is also being used in the logistics and transportation industry. Uh, many warehouses use robots that are um, AI infused and they use the robots to uh, pick up the boxes and place them according to their positions uh, wherever they're, they're destined to be. And uh, they're also used to find the quickest shipment routes. Again, this is just like uh, a navigation software that uh, suggests you the shortest path or the fastest path to reach your destination. In the transportation industry, self-driving cars are now the next big thing. And they are still under development, but soon they're uh, expected to be used by some of the major companies like uh, Tesla, Uber, Volvo, and Volkswagen. And they are expected to be a lot more safer on the road. Research is also underway to leverage AI algorithms to optimize public transport for scheduling and routing. Now that is actually being used by some of the country companies. Um, some of the transport companies, one that I know of is SWVL. Um, they're using customer data to predict when they should schedule a current bus on a, on, on, a, on a specified route. And that is how they're actually optimizing the, um, they're optimizing their customer data to uh, give more out better, you know, better revenue and better outputs. While making the world a healthier place, AI has its own advanced applications in the medical sector too. Let's talk about some of those. We're going to talk about um, healthcare in a little more detail. And the first uh, project that we're going to talk about is blindness detection DR on eye retina images. Now this was done by the Google developers. They took data from 54 different ophthalmologists and they accurately made a model that detects if you have the disease or not. Uh, now this is actually vital for the IT jobs because people who are working in the IT industry, they're always in front of the computer and so many of them are actually in small cities. So they don't have access to these doctors. Instead of having access to these doctors, they can have an access to this software. So whenever they think that their eyesight might be getting weak, they can just consult to the software and it, it will be able to identify if they're disease is there or not. Because if you have a look at the eye retina image over here, it is actually really hard to study it. And it is better to have a computer study it if you have a lot of a lot of people getting consulted from.
COVID Rapid AI Detection, CoRAID, as the name says itself, is an AI-based application uh, that uses the patient's x-ray for diagnosing of COVID-19. Uh, this application is uh, developed in Pakistan and the best part about this application is that it's fast and accurate at the same time uh, and it will test you for COVID-19 within a few minutes. Um, if you remember, I talked about deep learning, which was actually a mathematical model of our brain. So here we use deep learning to detect if a person has brain tumor or not. So we have an MRI image. We use computer vision as well, of course, because this is an image. So um, we have a computer, uh, M we have an MRI with a computer. So we're going to upload the MRI image on the computer. The computer breaks down the image into three components. First is a generalized image. Second is a lot more filtered out. And the third one is a lot more detailed as we call it fine scale. Uh, then we're going to put it in our deep learning model. Uh, just like our brain, our brain, uh, if, when we look at something, our brain uh, breaks it into different parts. If I look at a person, my head is different, my uh, upper abdomen is different, and my legs are in a different layer. So they're all connected together by the brain and a final output is given. Similarly here, the image is broken, broken into three parts. And once all those parts are analyzed by the algorithm, they are combined together uh, to form a final image. And a decision is made on that, on that final image, which is actually called classification because this is actually classifying whether uh, you have a disease or you don't have a disease. So it's basically a classification of a yes or a no. So in this case, group one is um, the negative group that you don't have the disease and the uh, group two one is the positive one that you have the disease. So that is how you uh, predict uh, diseases using artificial intelligence and deep learning. I will be telling you about the data set presented below. This is a data set of number of applications in the healthcare sector. In 2014, there were 663 million applications of AI, but it is predicted that by 2021, there would be 6.6 billion applications of AI in the healthcare sector. So we can easily see that the growth rate of AI is very large in the healthcare sector and it will soon take over the healthcare sector. Now, Mars will tell you more about it. A discussion prompt. Artificial intelligence will not take over the world. Now let's have a look. Have a look at how AI will not take over the world. First of all, most of our decisions are based on emotions. So when we're taking a decision, a human takes a decision, it is not solely because of his what his brain suggests, but it's also because of what his heart suggests. So when we talk about AI, it does go hand in hand with uh, the human humans. Why? Because there are so many, there's so much data available on the internet now. There's trillions and billions of gigabytes of data now. And when we talk about that data, we need that data to understand and predict future uh, prospects of a business, of any career that is possible. So you may want to uh, uh, opt any career in your life Let, let's suppose you want to be an accountant or a business owner or a lawyer or a doctor anyone you would need ai now so uh, it is preferable that you uh, take some ai courses if you do not uh, intend to go for ai as a degree you can take its courses that is because when we're talking about uh, five years from now uh, we'll have even more data because data analytics is just coming up. Big data is actually a thing. And as someone, as a wise man said, data is the new oil. So again, when we talk about AI with its emotions, uh, there there's an article on the New Yorker, why facts don't change our minds. This greatly emphasizes on the part that uh, emotions are a major part of our decision making process so ai and humans they are going to work together in parallel humans will talk about emotions ai will talk about the knowledge together emotions and knowledge will help us find a better way to make our decisions that are a lot more accurate and a lot more efficient all right now let's have a look at ai's applications in Pakistan. first we have dante what is Dante? Dante is basically an AI software 
based on an author's name. What Dante does is to write news reports. Is write news news reports. For example, if I input the data that Islamabad's total COVID cases were 2,500 for today, it will generate full-fledged news report, which will make uh, make the lives of of news reporters news report writers quite easy. So next we have Equagro. Equagro is Pakistan's first agri data company. It is a cloud platform to monitor all parameters for. Uh, of a farm and predict water scheduling, fertilizer requirements, weather updates, pest attacks, and as well as soil health. This is basically a farmer's dream. Now, this will n not only save lots of crops from getting destroyed, but it will also unburden the load on farmers. Now, my groupmate Ahmad Raza will tell you about Tax Dosti. Let's talk about the special application of AI, Tax Dosti. It's an intelligent software used by Federal Board of Revenue FPR to monitor tax returns by people. It detects and catches error in money trails and tax returns by, by common citizen, businessman or a politician. As soon as it detects a problem, it informs FBR, it alarms FBR that there is a problem and they must focus on it. And they can easily point out corruption and a fraud and that's the way they use AI now have a look at a business application of artificial intelligence mountainized innovative artifacts and what it is let's suppose I have a company and I want it to be more efficient than before I will make use of this software and provide it with some data of my company and the objective I want to achieve the software will use its machine learning algorithms to learn what strategies my company should adapt to have a better output than before and more revenues. It will provide, it will provide uh, me with the best strategies which my company would follow to achieve the goals of more customers, revenues and success. So that was a lot of serious talk. Now let's have something on a lighter note and let's see how AI can also be fun. Elon Musk plus Noor Khan equals Imran Khan. Don't worry, that is not a scientific equation. That is just something that we found out while we were trying to make a deep fake of Elon Musk using our very own Noor al -Wadud. So here we have Elon Musk with us and here we have Noor al -Wadud. We add the two of them together and we get something like this. Now we believe this is, looks something similar to our very own Imran Khan. But in the end, don't worry, this is just AI. Now we are going to confuse AI. Sometimes it gets confused by similar images. Here is the example of Chihuahua and a Muffin. Basically we can differentiate between Chihuahua and a Muffin but AI gets confused in these kind of scenarios because it uh, doesn't see it as, uh, as a 3D image because AI reads the image pixel wise and don't see the images like us so it gets confused sometimes. Let's have a look at a video clip. food it's the question stumping the internet well not really but it's fun to look at whoever thought of this is a genius just look up puppy or bagel and start there a toasted bagel with cream cheese has never had so much hidden meaning labradoodle or fried chicken is definitely the creepiest because they really do look like little baskets of Popeye's fried chicken when they're born. Sheba or marshmallow, I honestly can't tell the difference, but I love them both. Dalmatians or ice cream? Or how about Sharpays or folded towels? It's too cute. Yes, Chihuahua or muffin. I guarantee you'll never watch Legally Blonde the same way again. For viewer, I'm Sloan Glass. As you all might be familiar with some of the online learning platforms, let's have a look at some of them. First we have Coursera. 
Coursera is the best online learning platform. Here, you'll get the courses with certification from one of the best websites like deeplearning.ai and some of the best universities like Stanford, IBM and Imperial College London. Most of their courses are for $45 but you can also apply for financial aid and if approved, you'll get the course with, with, with the certificate for free. Alnafe. Basically, uh, it's an e-learning platform which, uh, which provides a lot of varieties of courses in just $20 per annum. Uh, for foreigners, it's like $100 per year. They provide different uh, courses like artificial intelligence, machine learning, all kind of programming languages and many other programs. And the best part is they teach in different languages such as Urdu, Pashto, Chinese, Arabic, English and many other languages. Now I am going to talk about edX. It's also an educational platform but it's an expensive option. It offers courses from world's highest ranked universities like MIT, Harvard, Georgia Tech and many other universities like this. Their courses starts from $50 and micro degrees ranges from $100 to $2,500. Their courses and micro degrees are of great significance in market. Now let's have a look at Global AI Hub. Global AI Hub is also one of the best online learning platform we have. I have personally learned the course Introduction to Machine Learning from them. In fact, my all group mates have learned th have learned this course from uh, from Global AI Hub, and we got cert and we got certified for that. You'll see our certificates in in the next slide. Also, they also they provide several other courses. For example, Python with Google, RPA Introduction to TensorFlow for Deep Learning, and a plus point, all their courses are free of cost and they are internationally recognized. Thank you. Now me and Azan are going to explain you about some universities that are offering artificial intelligence in Pakistan and some related courses like data sciences, cyber security, computer sciences and many more. Now let's talk about the universities that are offering artificial intelligence in Pakistan. Number one is FAST, National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences. It offers AI in Islamabad and Karachi campus. It also allows its applicants to apply for scholarship that is associated with the Punjab Education Endowment Program. Graduates of FAST are working as entrepreneurs or under tech giants like Google, Microsoft and many more. Fast pioneer degrees like Bachelors of Computer Sciences and Bachelors of Artificial Intelligence and Data Sciences and many more are coming. Other campuses of Fast are located at Lahore, Peshawar, Chiniot, Faisalabad. The second university we are going to talk about is GK, Ghulam Isaak Khan Institute of Engineering Sciences and Technology. It is located in Sawabi. But it also offers artificial intelligence with a joint program partnered by Huawei. Candidates can apply for number of scholarships they offer and alumni have been working for huge companies like Bentley, Audi, Dell, Mastercard and many more that you cannot name of. Universities other than FAST and GKE that are offering artificial intelligence are Air University and Hamdard University. They also offer you to apply for scholarships and the alumni of these universities have achieved a lot after their graduation. Thanks Vadur. Now I will be telling you about a few universities that are teaching AI from all over the Pakistan. For example, we have University of Faisalabad from Faisalabad. We have University of Management and Technology from Lahore. The Sayyid Case Institute of Technology from Islamabad. The Islamia University of Bhawalpur from Bhawalpur and from Aptabad we have University of Science and Technology from Multan there is an Institute of Southern Punjab from Haripur there is an University of Haripur from Mansara there is Hazara University 
from Sakhar, we have Sakhar IBA University. Even in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, there is AI being told nowadays, and that university that is doing so is University of Kutli. And from Lahore, there is a again superior university. There are numerous other universities all over the Pakistan that are offers AI related courses. For example, we have NERS that offers machine learning, computer vision and deep learning. Then there comes ComSats that is offering different kind of courses from on all of their campuses. For example, at Aptabad, Wok and Lahore, Atak, Sahwal, Wahira. Then there comes the Qurtaba University in D.I. Khan. Then there is a Balochistan University of IT and Management Sciences. And from Peshawar, we have Seacost University, which is an international university. Then there comes IT University of Lahore. All of these universities are giving numerous scholarships. For example, we have need-based financial aid scholarship in NERST and in concerts there is, is some scholarship institutes that are offering scholarship. For example, PPEC scholarship and PM program for FATA. Now over to you, Maas. Artificial Intelligence in the Professional Life As a part of this project, we interviewed some professionals from various fields. We wanted to ask if their field or any similar field could benefit from AI. Now, let's have a look at what they said. The endorser is Mr. Misam Raza Himani, who is the founder of Karachi.ai and is the Vice President of Business Intelligence at NBP Funds. Um, just like we talked about medical diagnostics, uh, he also claims that AI's two best features are pattern recognition and personalization. These can be used greatly for medical purposes. Firstly, medical imaging can be enhanced using AI on x-rays for more accurate diagnostics. Secondly, personalization can benefit prescriptions and developments of medicines based on a person's DNA. Um, and that is not it from him. We are now going to look at the interview that we conducted when he visited Fast Nashi University last month. AI Pakistan me kaise help kar sakti hai? Matlab ke socially, health me ya economic prospects me kaise Pakistan isse benefit karega? Government isko kaise use kar sakti hai for uh, you know for a better Pakistan? Okay, so कुछ recent projects थे जिसमें अगर मैं बात करूँ recently COVID का जो सानिया हो रहा है all over the world तो उसके अंदर AI बहुत ज़रा help कर रही है again COVID की जहाँ पे बात करते हैं तो social distancing चाहिए अब ये social distancing एक metaphor है जिसके अंदर हम ये कहते हैं कि एक बंदे का छः फीट फासला होना चाहिए but at a large scale इसको कैसे implement किया जा सकता है मतलब ये कि अगर policing भी की जाए तो उसकी limit है obviously जितनी नफरी तायनात है वो उतने ही लोगों को देख सकती है certain areas के अंदर लेकिन जहाँ पे AI की बात आती है तो आपके पास ढाई हज़ार रुपये का एक कैमरा आता है सीसीटीवी कैमरा जिसको हम कहते हैं और उसके पीछे बैकग्राउंड पे आप एआई की अगर प्रोसेसिंग लगा दें तो इट कैन डू एन नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स इट कैन रिकग्नाइज मी एंड यू तो अगर हम आपस में ब्रीच करते हैं तो हम दोनों सजावार भी हो सकते हैं और हम दोनों हो सकते हैं इन्होंने कानून ब्रीच नहीं किया टॉकिंग अबाउट आर इंडोर्सर्स हेयर वी हैव आर मिस्टर सहीब निहाल द कंट्री हैड ऑफ एस डब्ल्यू बी एल पाकिस्तान सो बेसिकली एस डब्ल्यू बी एल इज एन ए आई बेस्ड एप्लीकेशन अगेन Uh, that uh, plans routes uh, for its customers using AI uh, and provides local transportation to its customers on a very low budget. Moving forward to our next endorser, uh, we have Mr. Chen Kiyon, aka Musa, who has done his masters from Beijing Foreign Studies University. Uh, while answering to our questions, he said that AI is shaping a new era. Uh, well, he have a small message for all of us. So let's see what he said. Ah, Salam Alaikum. My Musa hai aur main Ching main Urdu se kar raha hoon. Hamari tuniya tezi se tarki kar rahe hai aur khub sam chande hainge nayi technology, masala 5G aur artificial intelligence, AI technology tuniya mein badi tabdiliyan laaye hai hai. Aur sabse badi tabdili zila AI mamasulat mein hai. نئی ٹیکنالوجی کے مدد سے خور کار کاریوں میں محفوظ سفر ممکن ہو سکے اور ابھی چین نے اے آئی ٹیکنالوجی سے چلنے والی کاریوں کا کامیاب تجربہ کیا ہے اس لیے مجھے امید ہے کہ پاکستان چین کے ساتھ 
नई टेक्नोलॉजी खास तौर पर एआई टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में काम करेगा और मुझे भी उम्मीद है कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा पाकिस्तानी तालब इलम इसके बारे में सख्त मेहनत कर, कर सकते हैं और आप सब के लिए ये बेहतरीन ख्वाहिशमंद दिंगे अल्लाह हाफिज Next endorser who is a data scientist and community project specialist at Global AI Hub Mr Kutai Akalam uh, while answering to some of our questions he said that from now on the world will be a whole different place because uh, after few decades computers will be handling everything almost everything he said um, in addition to it he mentioned that gold and oil is now old school because data is the new currency Moving forward we have Ms Wang Li Rong. Uh, she is a foreign trade saleswoman at Alvin Power Equipment. Uh, let's see what she thinks about AI. Uh how has AI made help to the local Chinese people? At present, artificial intelligence can do some work such as attendance, face recognition, technology remote location and computer data processing in this way people can improve their working efficiency and think more efficiency and more creative things better next endorser uh, mr chayan khwaja merchandise planning and retail strategist at canadian tire uh, while interviewing him he said that the whole world is going the ai's way Uh, well we have uh, the recorded interview of mr shayan so let's hear from him hi this is shayan khwaja i work on the retail strategy and forecasting division as a business analyst at canadian tire corporation which is based out of toronto ontario so how has ai helped local canadians i think the most recent example of the use of ai in canada is with the government using ai to predict and control the spread of coronavirus uh locally and at a national level if given the choice would i consider switching to ai or an r&d field i think absolutely i think that's where the whole world as a is going and i think i was lucky in the sense that ai was just coming up as i was starting my career and i was able to upgrade my skills and educate myself and really leverage some of the ai skills in ai and use them for my day-to-day task at Canadian Tire. So how has AI impacted the way we do business? Um I think the biggest use of AI at Canadian Tire has been leveraging transaction data and customer data to predict when customers are going to need certain products so that whenever their need arises we have the products at the best price. We're also leveraging AI data to predict and uh send out targeted offers to customers. um based on their purchase histories and transactions and what they've basically bought in the past and what they're going to need in the future uh using our actual transaction data from customer profiles so moving forward to our next endorsement we have Mr Lee Yongzhen who is foreign trade salesman at Alvin Power Equipment uh, while interviewing Mr Lee he mentioned that AI has made possible the life that once humans dreamt of Our next endorser is Mr. Syed Hasan Jalid, who is a senior machine learning engineer at Stell Health, which is basically an AI startup operating globally. So while in- interviewing Mr. Syed Hasan, he mentioned that AI has made possible the decision-making powers of a machine, and in the future, uh, it will not be limited to only decision-making, but the machines would be able to work on practical grounds and much more. Our final endorser is Dr. Mirza Umar Beg who is the associate professor at the computing department at Fast Nasher University he is the head of AI and machine learning lab and he has a PhD in computer science from the University of Waterloo uh, we had a detailed interview with him and let's have a look as to what he said we asked him to talk about one of his AI based projects that would be beneficial to the society this is what he said One of the projects that we have worked on at the AIM lab is the green computing. The objective is to improve the energy efficiency of smartphone apps. This project is beneficial for the society in numerous ways. Firstly, 
with energy efficient apps so smartphones will run longer on each charge secondly in an energy constrained society like pakistan this will help save upon an increasingly expensive commodity which is electricity last but not the least widespread adoption of energy efficient computing will decrease the amount of carbon emissions and lead to a cleaner environment hence the name green computing to the second question about how ai differed from other computing fields such as cybersecurity software engineering or networking his reply was ai is dubbed as the electricity of the future i think other computing fields such as cybersecurity software engineering and bioinformatics are still going to be relevant however ai is revolutionizing even these fields additionally ai is boosting the adoption of technology and is enabling the automation of number of tasks that were previously considered non automatable to the question about having any suggestions for the high school students who are coming toward computing he replied computing is disrupting the norms it already has a huge impact on our lives and is going to have an even bigger impact on human lives in the future we cannot escape its effects and must strive to become computing literate so that we can use the technology for the betterment of our society and for a better world in general and there we have it prediction is not magic anymore it is artificial intelligence we would like to thank everyone who joined us today and we would love to get some feedback from you as well uh, kindly fill in the form in the description below and let us know about what you think about ai and what you learned today we hope that it was helpful and we hope that it is going to help change the future thank you everyone take care oh but but before you go you have a short video coming up and it's quite a performance that i have been watching all day long so do watch it and do let us know how you thought that performance went in the comments below so let's check it out together Coming through.